Hello, I'm James Sylvester from JPS Reliability and the Reliability Training Institute RMS. And what we're sharing with you today is case study three of five. As with the previous two case studies, we're going to discuss the failure cause, the failure mechanism, the failure mode. And as with the two case studies previously, this is from real life data. And it's another example from my book, Enhancing System Reliability Through Vibration Technology, which was recently published. In addition, um, again, it's working with the Dr. K at Miraki Academy, where we're trying to bring the reality and the theory together. And in that way, I'm, what I mean by is, in theory, we have mechanical engineers who are trained highly for years and years to um, design and produce machines to do a job. but the bit they miss on the reliability side is they never get to see a failure. They never get to see a bearing failed, smell a failure, see the effects of a failure. So they can't have that within their data to build a better machine and loop around to eliminate a defect. So what we're doing is we're bringing the reality, what we see, and the theory together. And that's what I've been working with Dr. K at the Murky Academy. There are two previous case studies to this. Um, and they can be found on the link either on my blog or on the RMS website. The first case study was an electrical motor terminal defect. On this one, we highlighted using additional technologies um, and is where vibration analysis detected uh, a poor connection. The second case study was on a standby fan motor, highlighting the need for correct storage of assets, rotation of assets, um, as a, a force Brennan defect. And this for a case study is another electrical issue, um, but it's a very, very interesting one. Um, we've only come across a few like this before, so I thought it's definitely one we, we should be highlighting. A bit about the history. So this is a routine site we go to regularly. Um, electrical from a lemon gin, a bit of mechanical thermal, but it's mainly vibration analysis on the mechanical plant. On the routine survey, uh, we notice a change in the vibration pattern, not necessarily the amplitude, but there's a distinct change in the pattern. So we use thermography to check out the motor. And um, usually there is a temperature difference as the seasons change. But on this day, we can actually see a 10 degrees difference in the motor status. So four pole motor, 1500 RPM on 50 Hertz line frequency, um, it's two motors driving two um, epicycle gearboxes, as that is saying, driving two rollers, crushing the product. They're both under the same torque, tension, load, and stress. So on the survey, we notice this difference um, and the vibration analysis, and then through thermography as well. And from that, we decided to alert the plant electrical engineer, and we advised a full electrical inspection prior to any failure. This is a vibration data, and um, down the bottom here, 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 is the historical data where you can see the two times line frequency. And on this particular survey, suddenly we had an appear of a one times line frequency, a 25 hertz, which is really abnormal. And this is actually the um, peak view data. So comparing the velocity, the normal velocity, actually, the levels came down. But this was what you normally would see, the two times low frequency. Whether that's from a centric, uh, a difference in the air gap, how it's been torqued down, or just natural motion. On this survey, we had a lot of increase of um, 25 hertz, and the electrical mount was now actually sidebanded by 25 hertz. So the vibration had increased, but there's a change in the pattern and the condition. So we use thermography, and what was noticed was here on this data there, but comparing the two motors, you can see we're up to 75 and we're 63. And part of that data, so four pole motor says four north and south, so four sort of coil packs. Well, one of them was warmer. So we are thinking we've got an electrical defect. Some kind of getting warmer. Um, and, and the vibration was telling us that there's a different pulse, different electrical motion. So from that, the um, chapter in electrical investigation, and this is what we actually found. So here is a current trace, 
and this orange plot there is actually a varying current on this motor. Now, when you look to the three single phases here, you could see there's only half a cycle. So, on one of the phases to the motor on the free phase, there's only half a cycle. And comparing the two sine waves there, you can see a full cycle and the blue line a half a cycle. So we're thinking that is why we were getting warmer on one of the on one of the coil packs as such, and why we suddenly saw this 25 hertz. The motor was wasn't happy. It did some interrogation on the drive and found out it was the IVI card. Now we're not um, hugely electrical instrument people but we saw a defect and, and we've asked them to follow up. So the IVI card is basically linked to the um, IGBT, which is the Insulated Gate Bipolar Transistor. So this is part of the drive which creates the, the pulp fish modulation, which is a pulse and a switch in, really fast switch in the drive. And obviously this component was starting to fail. Now it had only been picked up when we saw a slight change in the vibration pattern and we checked with thermography. If we left this, this could have caused a lot of damage to the actual motor. So it was a really good find in that we've found the signal of a defect and it is rectified. So when we're talking about failure calls mechanism, we're thinking, well, it's electrical. It is just one of those failures, but it was a really old drive. It's been there for a while, so it more classes of age-related fatigue end of life. The mechanism of failure, electrical break, breakdown, electrical fatigue. Um, the failure mode, how we detected it was through vibration and the thermal pattern. So in summary, change in the vibration pattern um, and the thermography initiated further investigation. So it detected the sort of hidden electrical failure. Um, so an, again, a negative functionality event where secondary damage could occur which then would have cost production, could have caused the motor um, wind into a burnout, um, was averted. And in a controlled manner, they changed the IVI card and it's up back and running. So that's another good example of finding the defect, investigating, using more than one technology and, uh, and fixing the problem. So how can we help you? Well, we're very passionate about knowledge sharing, which is why uh, um, RS, RMS Reliability Training Institute, we um, deliver training, which is conformal with ISO 18436, um, as Mobius training. So you can get the MyBoc or the BNT certification. We have contract reliability services to help you out. Um, if you want to do practical upskilling um, people on site, we can help you with that as well. And again, I, I do like this slide because lots of people talk about uh, condition monitoring, vibration analysis, vibration analysis. Yes, 90% of it is vibration analysis, but there are other technologies which we should be using together. Um, so this is the, the technologies, vibration analysis, lubrication, thermography, and ultrasound. Uh, the main failure mode they can detect and how they're sort of all interlinked and we should be using them all together. Again, this is a slide just about um, JPS reliability, where we're registered, um, the book we published. And please, as I said before, um, look at the Mirky Academy website and um, get in contact with the doctor because um, it's very, very enlightening. Thank you very much for um, listening to this presentation. Um, we have two more to go. Um, so hopefully you'll tune in. Thank you.